Good evening and welcome to the Municipality of Monroeville's first budget hearing for November 7th, 2019 for the 2020 budget. It is approximately 6.39 p.m. on November 7th. We are going to start with opening up the agenda for public comment on budget issues only. So if there's anyone from the public that is here that would like to comment on the 2020 budget, now would be your time to do so. You'll have other opportunities as we go through the process um, throughout the budget season here. Seeing now, we're going to close that part, and we're going to move over to our presentation of our department heads. We're going to start with Mr. Joe Habala for Cable TV 15. So, Joe, welcome. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Mayor. Um, my page will be 105 in your budget books. Um, if everybody's I ready, I'll, go. I'll wake you guys, get ready there. Are we good? All right. Um, my objective codes, they start at 2110, which is outside personal services. Um, that last year we put 7,000 in there. This year we're going to up it by 1,000. The equipment's getting older. Um, and I, when I have to bring in the engineers, their prices have gone up. So we're just giving ourselves a little bit of a buffer in case anything big would go during that time, we should be able to cover it. Uh, pretty much uh, the other items down the line, um, the next one would be for me would be uh, in the telephone and we left that all, all the same. Um, automotive repairs is a 2611. Uh, pretty much everything stayed the same as last year. We didn't up too much. Um, films and photographic supplies, we added a little bit more because of the cost of, uh, that's for like CDs, that's for batteries, for the microphones, every, you know, things like that, small little items. A um, few things we have less, like the tires last year, we had 1,200, we made it 800 since we've got some new tires. Uh, we electronic parts. We it was thirteen hundred last year. We made that seven hundred. Um, the big thing, the biggest thing, is the fifty three ten. Last year we yeah. had to buy. Um, we had to replace our server, and we spent over twenty three thousand. So from that budget line item is now down to seventy four hundred dollars from twenty three thousand. So that was our biggest. Uh, drop. Other than that, everything pretty much stayed the same. Um, if there's any questions on any of the line items, I can answer them. Council? I have none. I'm none. Good. Nothing. Good, sir. Um, anything else? Uh, as far as what I want to do next year is I'm <coughs> going to replace the two flat monitors here, screens. I was going to go 60 inches. Uh, there was a suggestion made even go 70 if we could. The only one is I'm not sure if that could hold 70 over there. I don't know if we'd have enough room, but if we can put this one is very old. It needs replaced anyways. Um, we've had this one service. So that's one of our goals uh, along with maybe getting uh, I want to get a, um, a Adobe Premiere editing system in. We have Final Cut now and there's no more no service support for it, or yeah. any parts on that. So. Do you have any costs in here at all for either of those? I'm sorry? Do you have any costs in here for either yes. of those yes. items? Yes. Um, probably under the 5310 is where I was going to for the to replace the flat screens okay. here. Um, my Adobe, what I got was um, I have that under line item of uh, 2910. Uh, I got it for $400. I think we can get that with the software for $400 okay. to get us started. So I have that as a line item Great. too. So um, unless there's any questions, 
No, bigger's better. Or I say that. <laughs> we can't I just want to yeah. say, Joe, I see, I see you're under last year's budget. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. You're welcome, sir. Good job. Good job. All right. Thank, well, thank you. Thank you Thanks, Thanks, very Joe. much. Thank you. Nice job, Joe. Have thank a good you. evening, Joe. Mm -hmm. Council, the Senior Center will be presenting at the next budget hearing, so we're going to move over to Tina Mueller, our IT department. Page number, somebody. I am under expenditures, page 22 and 23. What page? 22 and 23. So I'm sure as you notice, there's a, there's a request for, a, for more money. Um, all of the things that I asked for for this coming year are personnel related. Um, so there are two personnel requests that I'd like to make. Um, I, I want to list them separately in case you decide you like the one and not the other. As you know, the IT department is two people, myself and Andy Kosovan, who is going to be retiring in April. He's been here 20 years. Um, so obviously, we want to replace him. Um, but what I want to ask for is, you know, because he's been here 20 years, he's got all that knowledge in his brain. <laughs> We would like him to actually train the next person coming in. So I'd like there to be an overlap of a few months so that he can fully train this person. So I'm asking for um, enough money so that we can hire that person in January, and when Andy leaves in April, then, you know, it'll just be one person after Where that. Where would you And he would stay? Yeah, this new person, yeah. Because gotcha. this, this would be to replace Andy's position because he's retiring. Oh, absolutely. So we just want to give him a chance to get all that knowledge into the new person. Do you have that in here? Yes, it's in here already, and from what I understand, the budget was balanced with this, you know, already. Yeah. So it's already in there. <coughs> I told Andy he can't retire. You know, I'd really rather he didn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not sure you can stop him, though, but, you know. Oh, yeah, we can. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, you can save yourself yeah. some money. So yeah. four, you want a four-month overlay for training? For Late? training. Yeah, okay. well, it's really, he's leaving sort of like mid-April, so okay, it'll really be three and a half, half okay. months, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's the one thing I'm asking for. So then the second thing I'm asking for is an additional IT person, asking so that there'd be three people in the department. Now, I know that we've hired someone for the police in the IT department, and he's already got a whole stack of things on him. We've got him started on some, you know, projects that were kind of languishing. We've got him doing upgrades and things like that. So he's already, you know, full-time being taken for that. Um, Does that come out of the police budget? or is That, that one is actually in the police budget, yeah, yes. Okay. That's, a, that's completely out of the police budget. Um, also, you know, in addition to, of course, you know, every year we get upgrades to software programs or additional software programs, our public works department has started, you know, promoting people, getting more computers, getting smartphones. Uh, Mr. Hugus has them all on email and everything now. So they're requiring a lot more support. IT support needs. And in addition, and I'm sure Mr. Poach knows, you know, every year it's uh, more security issues, mm -hmm. uh, more viruses, more spammers, more hackers trying to go after us. So it's kind of to the point where we really think we could use an extra person. Not only that, Tina, um, I was reviewing over all the stuff the department heads that are going to be presenting tonight. And you gave me a spreadsheet of all of the support yeah. that we pay for. Uh, but if you could do this, give me that sheet with a total number on there, because there's no total on the spreadsheet. Because I want to share that with Consul and show Consul possibly next Thursday when we continue on with our budget hearings, how much we pay in support with respect to Munis. You mean outside? Tell us that. Outside support. Tell yeah, us that. I was going to say, oh, because yeah, like to my contract service fees, we've got like 74000 in there, but that does not even include Munis, and that doesn't include our police CAD software support either. Which are probably So when you add expensive. that all in, it's hundreds well, of thousands of dollars. Well, over tracks through the... Rec, yeah. rec track that, too, although that's not terribly a lot of money. That's, that that's, comes out of you or that comes out of... Parks that actually right. is coming out of Parks, okay. and then Senior Center has a version of that as well, and it comes out of their there, budget okay. too. When Do you have another person in here? Um, or you want to add another? That other person? That is in here. It's already Both in there. Both those things I asked for are already okay. on that mm -hmm. listing. That's why it's it's kind of looks so big there. Right. Okay. And remember, of course, that's not all salary. That's, you know, salary and benefits. And benefits, yeah. And I had Jill project the numbers, and what she did is assume this person was going to have a, a whole family. So the health care is for a whole family. If yeah. this ends up being a single person, it will be less money. Okay. Right. That sort of thing. 
I can, <clears throat> but I can, yes, me. give you the list. Well, I'm I, in agreement with I can vouch that Tina's tired of hearing from me. <laughs> it's a true story. Yeah, I mean, IT is well, certainly... Paul, yes. we all are. I know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I had to zing you back on me taking up the time of the last month, so I got broad shoulders. I'll take it. You've been waiting this whole time for it. I think that we've already kind of been having that discussion that you things are evolving. It's needed. Thank so. you. Yeah. Council, any other questions for Tina? Nope. Yes, sir. I think no one can argue that you know, IT is is growing and it's not going any. It's not going to be yeah, smaller. Yeah, it's not going to go backwards. <laughs> right. No, exactly. Right. Well, it's becoming it's more complicated now. Yes, it is. Are, uh, do you think that there's much of a more of the capital like expense side of anything heavy duty? In the well, equipment? yeah. Now I know that you've made like I think Mr. Little just threw a bunch of money in capital and knowing that we were going to have to divide it out. Right. I have been working on a five-year capital plan. That'd be great. Um, all the computers, all the servers, all the extra equipment. So, yeah, you'll yeah, that, that's consistent. Like, we'll like that'll be even worse. It's your Christmas we'll, dream right. wish list. Uh, we will yeah. Be yeah. Well, maybe it may be more than just dream. It may no, be I understand that. Necessity that's, is, is it? Yeah, and when are we going to see such a item? Soon. The dream list. <laughs> Soon. Okay. We're not there yet. Okay, we're not well, there. Well, we're getting yet. there. I just wonder. We'll get through this one first. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Good deal. Well, some of that could be some of this. That's why I asked. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Tina. you, Tina. Thank you, Tina. Nice job. Yes. I, I Parks and Recreation, yeah, Paul Estock and Joanne Morris. Hi, Joanne. This is the last time I'd like to be gone. Yeah. You know, too. Thank so you. If, uh, Thank you. Thanks. Have a goodie. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, we don't have to dig. We have it right here. What page you is it? Right, right here. It's right all in here, Ron. It's all right in here. You guys are going to start on page. We're going to be under 3365. We're going to go to expenditures. So under expenditures, we're on page 75. Excuse me. Expenditure page 75. Okay. And we don't have to spend a lot of time on expenditures for 3365 because it doesn't fall underneath our budget. Um, all the expenditures will fall under Paul's budget for Public Works when he comes in here next week. The only thing that we oversee under 3365 is the revenue side. The revenue side is on page 27, um, revenue 27, page 27. At the very bottom is what 3365 falls underneath us. And what falls underneath us is the pavilion rentals, beer permits, any type of pavilion rentals, uh, ceremonies, stuff like that. That's where we fall underneath as far as <coughs> revenue. I'm sorry, goes. what page did you say? Page revenue, page 27. 27. One page twenty. It's expenditure. Revenue, revenue twenty seven. It says revenue at the bottom twenty seven. Yeah. Basically, as you're all aware, the park continues to be a great asset for the community. Um, we get more and more people want to hold events there. We had the Jack Sedlak cleanup day this year again. We had at least five hundred people participate. The school district does Jamis Day at the end of the school year. Um, Poor York Shakespeare is growing as a local uh, theater group through our municipality. Um, and Rova Foundation held their second annual um, community day. I understand there were at least 3,000 people that attended that. So we're getting more and more out in the community. Local people are using it as well as people in other communities, which is good, I think, because the more people that know our resources, the more people that want to live here. So, you know, the more assets that we can show to the community and neighboring communities, the more that benefits us. And also underneath there, too, obviously now those six, six pickleball courts were completed, along with the tennis courts and the basketball courts. And that's where I showed you the pictures there. Are and they still playing pickleball up there? Mm -hmm. I saw they them last week. I mean, even the weather's changed. They're starting to change now. Yeah. We left a couple nets for them in a container. If they get a nice day, they can come out and put them yeah. up. So they're very portable and they're very yeah. easy to put up. So they're ecstatic about it. And they just recently yeah. put a wall up there for a practice wall. And um, they're, we're really looking forward to doing some programming programming that up there um, and I, Mr. Poach isn't here but the other thing that we did for the first time here that's on here is the cool event that terrain race we just had in October I, mean, I know the mayor participated in it and uh, it survived <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Poach was there with uh, his you know with different staff and stuff and I was hoping maybe he wanted to elaborate on that but it was a great success um, the weather didn't cooperate I mean, it did, I mean, but it didn't. I would say we probably, between the people that came to watch and the participants, roughly around 7,000 people. Wow. I would say between yeah, considering the crowds, 7,835. There you go. Wow. Good job on that. So I think it went very well. Um, 
Sean Did, Logan said, uh, Sean Logan told me that's how I know. Do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There's been nothing but positive feedback about it. Yeah, that. it's been it was a great event. Like I said, if the rain just kind of helped it didn't help with parking for a short period of time, but other than that, I think the road stayed clear. I mean, I can't elaborate on the, you know, people getting hurt or anything like that. I didn't know if Eric wanted to elaborate on that. Yeah, but we'll bring that up later because we're going to talk about maybe the next yeah. <clears throat> next time yes. we might consider this. Yes. Yeah, yep, yeah. and you guys know the dates and stuff like that, so that'd be really a great Along those lines, Paul, I'm sorry to cut you off. So the, but on revenue for that, like say, since you talked about it, any discussion from the department as far as fluctuating the permit fees for such events? You know, yeah, the rent, we did, rent we, the facilities, whether it's for something like that or the ball fields or the 5K races, any? We've actually increased the rates if you look in our fee schedule, which is at the very, very beginning of the booklet, the budget book. We did raise our fee schedule <coughs> pricing. We raised the prices on everything there. So we did do that this year. We raised them. Up. I, I'm not sure what the fee schedule is at on there. We, we meant to put it in here and we didn't do it. Yeah, this. so. Fine. But we did do that. If you want to look at it, if you, you have any questions, you know. let us know. We'll gladly address that issue. Um, going so to, go we ahead. did the we did the uh, the courts yep. and all of that um, from last year's budget. What do you have? Are you going to tell me now? Okay. Yeah, yeah, about Am this I, year for yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to bring it up in okay. under forty six hundred. So okay. I'll bring that up. So then, in regards to uh, if we go up to forty five hundred, you we have Which much. Is so you're going to be on page forty five hundred. You're going to be your seventy seven expenditures. Expenditures is on seventy seven. Okay. And we don't have any revenue under 77, so under, excuse me, under 4,500. Okay. Uh, 4,500 really is just our salaries that we take, you know, for everything there, our longevity. If you look at the different things there, contract services, when Tina brought it up, the rec track does come out of there. The contract services is at 3,500, which is about three quarters of the way down. That does come out of our budget at once a year for 3,500. Pretty much everything is the same. Yeah, Pretty much basically. We've yeah. really tried to maintain it pretty much there. As far as events, you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, actually, last year we ran approximately 700 facilities, um, which was an increase about 17% from 2018. So more and more people are looking to rent our pavilions, ball fields, amphitheater, whatever. Um, already this year we have over 100 pavilions reserved for 2020. So if you want to make your reservation, <laughs> do it soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, also falls under this is the recreation brochure. Comes out quarterly. We actually put like a fake one in the back of yours. They're actually being printed right now. They're going to be in the mail to residents um, next week, no later than Thanksgiving. Everybody will have it. It covers the period of basically the end of December through the end of March. Um, and this is sent to all Monroeville residents, as well as that we have like a base of 400 non-residents to participate in our activities regularly and have asked to be um, included in that. So, um, and just a, an FYI, I put in here just for you guys to know, Westport and Heritage Trail just completed an additional three miles from Murraysville to Export, which now brings us to about nine miles. You can go from Is Trafford that three miles to long, Export. That, yeah, that length right there. yeah, I it did, did it three feet. Yeah, so it's about it's pretty nice. I mean, it's, it's, like, it. it's under nine miles, but it's now you can go from Trafford all the way to Export and pretty easily i mean it's pretty amazing you have so. oxygen stations <laughs> <laughs> i can't go that good. easily yeah there's restrooms <laughs> along the way and everything yes and there's a lot of restaurants that are now they're benefiting out there with the restaurants and stuff like that yeah, I heard Dick's and murray go for breakfast to dick steiner from yeah, Monroe. yeah they yeah, just yeah, walk the trail and go yeah. have breakfast and you got penn murray which is the old penn monroe which is along there you can literally walk up the steps and you're at the penn murray and the old river town which is hell town you can now yeah. park and go over to hell town and have oh, a couple wow. of beers so yeah, DUI on a bike, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> so and that goes with that. Now 4,600, we'll go right to that one. That's going to be our expenditures. On 40, page 79. Page 79. And revenues, page 28. Um, a lot of that with me is the amphitheater. Last year, if you remember, we had the Eagle Scout project. Adino, I, can't, I apologize, don't remember his last name. Uh, help put in the benches yes. and the steps and people just love it it's great for the jazz festival for Shakespeare for anything so what we would like to do is and in addition to that we've had a big wedding reception there and a wedding and we've thought of working on this for the last couple of years it's just a matter of having the funds to 
make it happen is making the amphitheater be a wedding venue for um, larger weddings since the, amp the um, gazebo only holds like 30, 35 people. So if we have the wedding, um, if we have the amphitheater for the weddings that are larger, uh, we can, you know, accommodate a lot more people, bring in a lot more money. Um, the wedding reception actually was for a wedding that took place um, somewhere far away, in a different country. And then they came back and they wanted to have a reception here. So they, as you'll see in the picture, they used the whole amphitheater as a reception hall, set up a little bar up by where we put the equipment for the amphitheater, um, sound equipment, and they had a great time. Just recently we had an, um, a previous summer employee got married there, him and his um, wife on the stage. So I mean, it has a lot of potential. Um, we'd like to get more benches in. Um, I notice your special events came down 10,000. What caused that? So what we do, what happened here is, this is that UPMC uh, that we received for the performance series, and that's the reason why you see the difference. Of, it's a ten thousand dollar. Correct. Um, is what that is. Sorry, Joanne, I didn't. Mean that's okay. To that's, okay. that's okay. No, no, we were going to bring that up to you, but yeah, yeah, that's what that is. So that'll actually go back in there. It, it looks different because expenditure and the revenue, but it should equal. And I have something else on that. As soon as she's done, I'll talk to you about that. Um, again, like we were saying about the performance series. <laughs> You know, we appreciate the continual support of UPMC. I just heard back today from Sean Logan that UPMC is already committed to 2020 for the performance series. So it's good to know we already have that covered. Um, again, we continue to bring in decent groups, in my opinion, that draw larger and larger crowds. So um, it, it's a good thing. How about bringing in more food trucks? Everyone seems to in, like that. We like could. Community days. Um, the, the only thing is, right now, I use the soccer club. They come and they provide the food, and it's a fundraiser for them. So, I mean, we can do the food trucks. We just have to have things that they don't sell. And what we're like finding with, the, with, yeah, the, we with the food truck, we they could. want <laughs> large amounts of people. They want to be able to, like, like for the, for the uh, Monroe Foundation event. Yeah, the it was a great event was, for that because yeah. there was a lot of people, and that's why the food trucks were so successful. It seems like they don't like the smaller events of like two three and we can't people. guarantee i mean we get <clears throat> some performances 250 other ones 2000 yeah. but i can't guarantee that you're going to have that kind of crowd right. so so mr harvey we were asking is like we'll see under the revenue it goes from 105,000 down to 40 and the reason why that is is under the the grants that money was in there for the what, last what project for the you, courts what page you on? i was on page revenue page 28, 28. You can see now it went from 2019 revised budgets 105,000, and now it's down to 40,000. And the reason why is we were able to put money in there to help pay for an Allegheny County CITF grant. Um, I do say that I'm, we do need to add in $75,000 into that line item now because what Linda asked about. I just had Tim sign off on a grant for Evergreen Park for the playground. Um, so we are that whole playground is going to be completely redone the entire park um, benches I thought they just didn't work up at Evergreen yeah. huh didn't they just do work up at Evergreen no we just did some small little things uh, repairing the timbers and stuff like that so uh, Tim just actually signed off on this <coughs> grant and I actually have a paper if you don't mind I'll pass it around to you yeah. for you guys to sign as part of the grant but we just got it yesterday Tim signed it today if you want to Elaborate All the on that. Members and the mayor have to, you should sign that. Yeah, so you guys who don't mind just signing this while we're going around, it's, and you have to put in blue pen. That's a key thing. Here. Mine's blue. Can Interestingly thanks, enough, we can thank Senator Brewster. I, I, I brought my blue pen tonight. Thanks, Senator Brewster's office. And this will be this will be what not this work won't be until spring in the spring. Correct, because it's an eight week lead time, and then talking to Mike um, Strom as far as that goes, it probably makes more sense to do it in uh, the spring. What exactly are they getting done? Uh, so we're doing a complete playground for all ages mm -hmm. in uh, a swing, the swings, um, a structure, a play structure for nice. three to five, a, st a structure for five, six to 12, um, a tire swing, uh, picnic, uh, excuse me, uh, Bench. benches, uh, trash receptacles, the whole thing is okay. getting be done, all new mulch, everything is being done under this grant. Great. So, yeah. Also under this department comes Camp Chippewee, 
Um, our special needs camp ran for six weeks this summer. We had about 140 registrations. Um, you know, it's one of the few camps like this still in the Pittsburgh area. We get kids not only from Monrovia but from other areas just trying to find something to do a little different than schoolwork during the summer. So it's a great asset to the community. Um, I'm a little not sure yet what we're going to do Fridays, but we'll work that out as it comes along. A quick question. Uh, I see under your medical supplies. Do we have the uh, heart starters? They're not yeah, to starters up there? Yeah, you want to talk about that? Yeah, they're not going until the spring. Until the spring, right? I'm saying, but we're going to have them. Yeah, yeah we're going to. Have no, yeah, Joe and I, Joe and I just talked about that last week or the week before, yeah. and they're not coming actually till the spring now. So how many are we going to have? That's so we have two, two at the community park, one at each concession stand, and we actually two. have we have two. We have, plus we have the one from the pool, and now that one will be available to go somewhere. Too. Oh, okay. So we'll actually have three now in the in, around the parks. Thank you. Also, under this come special events. Um, we do a number of them throughout the year. We had the Easter egg hunt, uh, the first National Kids to Park Day in May. Um, we had some like performers and little things down at the amphitheater. Unfortunately, it fell on Kennywood Day, but it is what it is. Um, we had our trail of treats recently in the rain. Um, I've been trying to make that happen for three years, and we still ended up with like 500 people. So it was it was a good event to have. I can only imagine if the weather was good what we'd have. Um, still upcoming this year, we have Snacks with Santa, scheduled for Saturday, December 7th, number four fire hall. Santa will be there to get kids lists, we'll have crafts, we'll have refreshments. It's a fun day for the family, dress up, take your picture for free. What time is that? Uh, 10 to 12. On the 7th. Yeah. Thank you. On the 7th? On the 7th. From 10 to 12? Okay. And we also have a gingerbread contest in conjunction to that. We have a category for children as well as adults. <laughs> and it's kind of a nice decoration as well as um, people enjoy participating in it. We've had as many as, I'd say, 15, 20 gingerbread houses. Nice. So it's a nice little added thing okay. as well. We also, okay. we also do community no. outreach. No. Um, I go to a lot of different things throughout the year to let make people aware of the recreation department. I have a booth at Community Day, National Night Out. I participate at the library. And upcoming here next weekend, the weekend of the uh, 16th, we'll be participating in the Chamber of Commerce's Healthy Holidays at Monroeville Mall. 4,700 expenditures is on page 81. <laughs> with our revenues on revenue page 28, but 81 is the expenditures. Um, not much change there whatsoever. We actually have lowered it. We went from 106, I think, to 101, so everything's pretty much the same in that department. It basically covers our leisure learning classes. Um, we continue to have a good relationship with Gateway School District as far as using their facilities for the pool and different classes, as well as we use the park. We've been using the municipal building for some classes as well as some of the subcontractors like CS Kim have been using their own site to hold their classes. So we have a good working relationship with everybody. Um, we have people from six months to 85 participate, 85 years, so it's a, it's a growing um, entity for the municipality. We also have our summer day camp. Um, summer day camp ran for 10 weeks this year. We had about 350 participants. Um, the only change has happened is last, in 2018, um, the Visitors Bureau sold their bus that we used for our field trips. It was a good deal for us, you know, and now we have to use a school bus, not quite as glamorous. The kids haven't complained. The only downside is it's almost triple the fee to use the school bus as it was to use the um, Visitors Bureau bus. Have you adjusted your weekly fees to the I have bureau. adjusted them as well as the sold, other positive sold. thing is we're able to get more people on a school bus than we <coughs> were on the visitors bus so it kind of helps out there as well and we did raise the fees for that again to cover the cost yeah. and then in this on this page the uh, salaries and wages this is would that just be for the camp counselors it's for the uh, yes for 4700 not the instructor it would not the instructor no no also that's under too. 4700 uh, 4, oh we can go to 47 yeah. yeah it's under consultants yeah so 4700 the 308 uh, excuse me uh, expenditures I said the wrong one 
No problem, page 81, so the 4700. The consultants yep. come under 2110, two one yeah. But then that gets... Then you have temporary... That place. gets washed out or gets reimbursed from the we revenue get re side. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because that's not really... They're getting paid essentially out of the registration fees. Yep. Correct. They're all covered Correct. cost. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Yes. Okay. Whereas the 1300 the salary, the, that's the... Those are counselors. actual employees. That's camp counselors. Yes. Those are actual employees. employees. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So over like swim swim instructors, camp counselors, everything comes out of the first one, salary wages. The consultants is like a CS Kim Correct. or a, they're the outside Kim consultant. Pana, yeah, somebody different. like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, why did you uh, rent or of uh, building structures or rooms uh, drop? We don't have anything that we rent anymore, basically. We have one location, Sunrise School, we use as a backup. So we really don't have to rent any more facilities. We still right. use Thanks. it. Sunrise, we will. There is some expense there, but it's n it's very minimal anymore. So it was just worth dropping. How are we doing with like um, the fields? Like, I know there's softball, there's baseball, there's the the intercultural <coughs> baseball. Uh, yep. soft, all these leagues are coming in, as well as our own kids in Minerva. How's that? How are we doing with all that? Doing well. I mean, so our number we we have again. I as far as putting it in, so it can be. We always say we're going to put a separate line item, and we didn't do it this year. Mm -hmm. It's in, and I promise I'll get it in there. I'll give you a breakdown of it. If you don't mind, I'll just email all of you separately That's fine. with it so you can see what the number is. Plus, we're receiving another check for the fall pro, the fall games, and also, too, we're receiving um, a fee for the cool events. We're also going to be receiving a fee for that. So those figures aren't in, like, under ball field rental? Right, exactly, because they're under pavilions underneath. That the, comes in under pavilions. Yeah, okay. and I want to break it out. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, that should be broken. I know. I said it last year we should have done it, and yeah. I just I just I think realized. we could do that this year. Well, it's under, I'm what happened was the rec truck got updated this year with the help of Tina. It was awesome that we got up, and the codes kind of got screwed up a little bit. So we just have to recode that to be a separate line item. Okay. Okay? Well, and it's just a mistake. Swap up tomorrow yeah. or whatever. Yeah. That'd be helpful. That yeah. Be Josie, fun. she can get it done like that. <laughs> <laughs> And our last one again is 4,900. We can just move forward with that. So there's not much to talk about there. Um, well, I don't know, Tim, we uh, is it, uh, this is a, a piece of it, and that's the, the, the is the pool. We talked about where this eventually is going to going to go forward. I mean, you talked about it. Well, as far as the <coughs> swimming pool, yes. of it, I mm -hmm. mean, it basically would be a wash. Right. Um, although we do subsid we did subsidize the swimming pool. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars, maybe, to, d depending on the weather and how much revenue we took in. The last couple of years, obviously, we've had a rainy, we've had a lot of rain, so we haven't taken in as much revenue. We may have last year, I don't know about this year. I think we may have subsidized the pool twenty thousand dollars. You wash all that out, you're probably going to gain fifteen thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, which will filter down to the fund balance. Right. Okay. okay. So, for that, I mean. Be sure that everybody is clear with that. As we look for, move forward with planning on how we're going to, you know, formulate the rest of the of the let's use the term aquatics programs for the next uh, year or so, we've used this sort of as our planning number as it exists right now as a thought, you know, moving forward. But that's not exactly how it's going to be listed. We just wanted to be clear with that as well too. So doesn't mean anything's going away from what we're doing. Right. It's just the how it's going to be. Staying there, we're just going to yeah. figure it right. That's mm -hmm. right. It's going to be a, the the accounting process is going to be just a, a little bit different to make it make it clear. Okay. So yeah. I mean, I think this is as good a time as any to bring that that point back up. Okay. Too. So. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Anything else? Yeah. Council. Nope. I'm good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oops. Nicole Henline, Library. Because they're going to have a wish list too, right in this capital thing that we haven't seen yet. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't plan to begin. Or it's what we give them. Well, I know, but I want to see the wish list. <laughs> no, we'll make. No. Yay. Right. Well, yeah. I think the IT person <laughs> here. Somebody's going to ask. It's convenient. Number, so that That's what Joe gave me. What number? Nicole, what page will we be looking at for 99. the. 99. Expenditures. Okay. Yeah. 99. Mm -hmm. I just want to take a minute to thank um, council, the mayor, the manager, the library board, and all municipal employees for their continued support of the library. Um, and I'd like to take a moment to tell you about some of the things that have happened in the past year. 
and what the library has been doing in service to the community thanks to your contributions. And Joe helped me <coughs> set up this laptop that he's now going to magically put on the screen. Thank you, Joe. Um, the library has always been a great equalizer, a place where everyone can access knowledge and information no matter their situation or background. That trend has continued and expanded beyond just traditional books. Knowledge is now hands-on and exploratory. We've embraced that and are helping to train the leaders of tomorrow by providing programming and outreach in science and technology. The library is still that place where you can find a copy of your favorite classic or newest James Patterson, but it's also a place where families can meet for playtime, kids can learn to code, adults can attend lectures on important and interesting topics, and seniors can access one-on-one -on -one assistance with computers and other gadgets. And that's just a taste of what we're able, with your support and that of the community, to offer. Some people still ask, why do we need a library when we have smartphones and Google? I have two answers for them. The first is a quote by um, author Neil Gaiman. Google can bring you back 100,000 answers. A librarian can bring you back the right one. In a time when we're inundated with so much information, it's important for community members to have a resource where they know they can seek information and assistance that will be valid. Um, the second answer is that it can, in a continually digital time, people want a place to create community. The library, much like the Senior Center and the parks, offers that type of space. People can gather to discuss current issues, listen to music, dance, sing, create, and explore. It's a place to connect face to face, a place that offers welcome and community to all. We're fortunate with your support and our amazing staff to be able to offer a wide variety of programs, services, and materials. The first slide shows some of our most popular programs from 2018, including Girls Who Code, Storytime, Soul Line Dancing, The Star Party, Kindergarten Readiness, and these are just a few of the hundreds of programs we offer each year. In 2018, 21,124 community members attended 1,025 programs. That was an increase of 158% in attendance over the past five years. We're on track to increase that number even more for 2019. Next, you can see our circulation numbers. And these are the items that get checked out of the library each year. As you can see, there's been a 29% increase in the past five years with a 9% increase in just this past year. In Allegheny County, out of 46 libraries, we had the fourth largest increase. And that's a great thing because this circulation number, um, like your support, translates into the Regional Asset District formula to bring more money back into our community that we can use here for our community members. Um, Next, you can see our door count. We had over 165,000 visitors last year with an increase of 16% over five years. The next slide shows a few of the grants, gifts, and awards we've been honored to receive in the past year. We were awarded a family place grant worth $18,000, which will help our library to become a stronger resource for families. We were thrilled when Monroeville was chosen as a, the location for the 2021 Statewide Library Conference. I personally was honored and honestly slightly terrified um, to have been voted second vice chair of the association, which will make me the chair of the conference in Monroeville. My staff and I are excited to show off what Monroeville has to offer and work with our colleagues to ensure high quality, confer high quality conference for several hundred attendees. Um, the next slide shows some of the new services, partnerships, and projects that we have in the works. Um, we've increased our community partnerships, including taking programming to 30% more classrooms and daycares. And we are currently working with the Allegheny County Library Association to pilot a program that pairs libraries with social work interns to better serve our community, especially those most vulnerable members. And as you know, we have two funding streams. Um, the majority of our support comes from you at the municipality. And the other includes our support from the county, state, and local library fundraising and grants. From this second stream, we were able to save the municipality a bit of capital money by taking on these projects with the alternative funding. In the past few years, that has included the elevator, which is finally done, and a new boiler, an air handler, and with a bequest, we were also able to add a room 
that's available for more programs and community meetings. The next slide is probably the most important and my favorite, um, the return on investment. And the library is one of the best deals in town. For each dollar invested into the library in 2018, four dollars and fifty two cents worth of services is returned to the community and that's a 69% um, increase since 2014. The large blue circle indicates the value of the services provided in the year. The yellow circle um, shows the municipal or shows all of the library investment and then the green circle shows municipal investment and the orange state and county. The last slide answers a question that I get frequently, which money goes where? Um, your municipal investment um, provides staff, benefits, utilities, some building maintenance, and some contract services, including janitorial and HVAC. The non-municipal contributions go towards everything else. The materials that we lend on a daily basis, programs, continuing education to help us learn how to better serve our community, office supplies, furniture, PR, and our computer leases. And lastly, I want to remind you and thank you because your municipal investment um, that has been consistent leverages community county investment in the library and community as well. And hopefully someday soon, as the state did increase for the first time in 12 years, we will also be able to say that, that your contributions leverage state money as well. So hopefully that day is coming soon. Um, the budget before you on pages 99 and 101 is presented to you with the support of the Library's Council Appointed Governing Board. And we believe that this is the budget will, that will help us to offer the best programming services and materials that we can to the community. I think that's right. And will allow us to continue being yeah. a vital part of the community. And I put the wrong page numbers on my PowerPoint, so. No, that is right. No, that is right. Oh, that is right. Yeah, I no, said right. the you wrong said it wrong. <laughs> yeah, you said it wrong. Yeah, that's right, Nicole. It is right. Couldn't, couldn't be right both ways. <laughs> And please do let me know um, what questions I can answer. I have one quick one. Yes. On page 99, it's under the printing. Mm -hmm. The printing went from zero, then in um, 19 <coughs> actual, it's 9,000, then it's back to zero, and then now it's 20,000. This is under 99 or 101? On page 99. 99. 99. Uh, 2304. Fourth item down, printing. Oh, I don't have that. Do I have the wrong? You have the wrong page? 8200. Oh, 8200. Maybe you're these, wrong. Somehow these page numbers are wrong in the one I have. 8200 and then um, item 202304. 20, mm -hmm. Okay. I still, I am so sorry. You don't see um, it? No, I Here. don't have the right. Here. I'm so sorry. I thought I had everything. Why is it not coming? Back? I don't know. Thank oh, because I'm trying to move things up in the front instead. Look how simple that works. Okay, the 2304. The reason for that is previously it was part of. We had a um, third budget line. So we had a 2100, a 20, or an 8100, 8200, and 8300. Okay. And last year we moved everything from 8300 back to 8200. So you, you took out, like when you took out the state last year. Right. Yeah. Okay, I remember. And I do also believe that there is another number that says printing that we have used and that might have made made it confusing because one of them just says printing and one of them says printing and PR. We use that line that says printing for printing and okay. PR. Okay, nonetheless, what, what do you print? Yeah, what's the $20,000 cost of printing? Like, do you send out brochures? Is it advertising, um, you know, for events? What, mm -hmm. what is the... It's, some of it is um, from our just newsletters that we send out every month. Um, some of it is part of, oh, I usually bring a list of everything, and I didn't this time. Um, 
That also is for anything. We have banners sometimes. That also goes for um, any PR costs of appearing if we buy a table um, and things along those lines. Okay, so it's like that packet that you bring us every month that says all the programming and, mm -hmm. and okay. Yes. All right. You don't mail that out, do you? No, we do not mail that out. Yeah, no, that's just, okay. That's why I wondered why it was like zero and then all of a sudden 20,000. I figured it had to be. Yes, I think it's because it was under the, the, way it was the 8,300. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. saying under those other sections, it should be gone. Correct. Correct. Okay. And that, did that also <coughs> include some of the advertising, the paid for advertising as opposed to the stuff that's also like the Times Express runs? Yes. We also do a little bit of paid advertising in things such as in Monroeville. Um, and we have a screen that shows around its town vision, I believe. Okay. Um, so those kinds of advertising things. I, I just wondered where it came from. It was That's like all of a sudden. From 8300. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I answer any other questions? Nope. No. Nope. Doing great. Also, anything else? Yep. And then, and then the ACLA from the, the county, that is reflected on the revenue side, that offsets. The <coughs> Correct. Revenue. Everything under that eighty-two hundred is covered by <coughs> revenue that is not municipal. Yeah. So that page we we're talking about. We just handed it. We, we, yeah. The one yes. Gave her. Yeah. We get reimbursed by the county for that exact same amount. Right. This whole page? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's the act. Yeah, that's, the, that's why yeah. it's in a revenue. Are we even talking about Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Nicole, sometimes. Well, like, we, like you said, it's tax money or whatever. I mean, it is. It it's is. tax money. Yes. We're, we're looking and, at, but I think the challenge has always been to, uh, it's taken me, you know, two years to understand the darn formula that goes with that. It's a, it's a very complicated piece, but the things that have been positive have been people in the door, mm -hmm. programs and deliveries, um, uh, circulation, all those things. And then this year there was an increase due to the municipal contribution from last year. So that's the short version of it. So yeah. the, it ends up when we had had an increase and have had those increases, we, the library ends up with more money too mm -hmm. in terms of reimbursement. So it's, it's a very, the formula is really a whole lot of math. It's, it's part of, it's 46 libraries. So it's, you have to take into consideration what everyone else has increased as well. And it's yeah. very complicated, but it does allow us, because of your consistent um, contributions and because of our increased circulation and increased door, door count, we have been able to bring in a little bit more there. That was what helped us to do the, the teen after school program. So, Nicole, population doesn't go into that formula. It does. Areas of service. Yeah. It does, but it's a smaller proportion. Yeah. Okay. I can share the formula with you. It's oh, I've seen it before. <laughs> it's, it is a complicated formula. Yeah. Uh, it's more so what the municipality puts into is mm -hmm. probably the biggest variable. Right, because it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with how much you have increased. It has to do with how much we have increased in comparison to the other 46 libraries. Okay. So. And the, that 2020 figure on the revenue side for the ACLA, that's already, that is the exact figure we're receiving. Correct. <laughs> and the reason the books go up is because we have to spend 12% of our budget on materials every year um, to receive state aid. Okay. So that number always goes up. And then I do have one last question about circulation. Yes. So if someone uh, downloads an mm -hmm. ebook mm -hmm. through overdrive yes does that count towards your circulation it does indeed okay so yes. as long as someone is registering overdrive through the Monroeville library yes as long as you have your Monroeville library card and that's how you signed into overdrive the first time anytime you borrow an ebook or e audiobook it counts okay, very good. So, yeah. anything Any else council nope. no I think nope. some of the you boards here thank you, thank you guys I appreciate it guys as well Mm -hmm. Next, we have our finally for this uh, this budget hearing our tax office, our tax collector, Mr. Pat Fulkerson, and Liz Summer. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Best for last, right? 
<laughs> She's tough to follow. That's all I gotta say. She does a fine <laughs> job. You got all the money. That's all Someone's gotta pay for it. Well, you can contract Pat with uh, the library for you know presentation technology. Right, she's you go right. Yeah. She's fantastic. It'll work on the revenue side. So you have yeah. to share that. To do that. She does it. That library has job. improved ever since she really? came on. Board. Well, that's when the numbers went up. I that's why I said when she started. Very impressive. Thank you. It's very kind. Impressive. Kind of you to say. It's been a great department. Anyway, we're going to go on page 13 and page 25. And before I want to <clears throat> get into it, I want to tell you we had another banner banner year. Wait, 25. We have been over four a million dollars the last four years of a surplus, and I want to thank my department. Uh, that department has been an asset to the municipality. Uh, I have people coming in my office and outside my office and has thanked me for the employees that are there. They're, they're an asset to the community and to us. They're knowledgeable, understanding, and they're kind. Uh, they're just, they just do a good job, and I want to recognize them as Carol, Kathleen, Doug, and Liz. They're just a terrific group of people, and I'm just a backstab, just, just a department head, but they do all of the major work, and they do a fine job. That is what I wanted to get, and I thank you people for listening to me on that. Thank you for putting that in minutes. Yes. You're all paying attention. That's all right. <laughs> I don't mind. I think, and I want to thank council for giving us the resources to do what we do. And that's the same as the, uh, the library department. You guys, we don't have the resources. We don't do the job. And I want to thank you for giving us the resources to do it. And that's why we're going to talk about the budget. Uh, and basically, in revenue side, uh, we're about the same as we were the prior year. Liz, you want to go into these things? I, yeah, I just wrote myself some, wrote some notes, but yeah. I didn't know. There were, you know. Are there any concerns on the revenue side? If there, at what over the over the past uh, four or five years since uh, we hired Douglas and, and Liz, Liz has always been there. But yeah, well, <laughs> but but uh, how much do you think has been pr collected uh, from uh, delinquent? Uh, well, so I, I have some statistics that I was going to. I was just going to say I I I was going to go over this little piece of information and then um, if somebody has questions about what I okay. have I, I put together some statistics so because I like numbers but um, anyway I, I do thank you also for including us in the discussion of the budget um, our expenses have remained pretty consistent over the last several years but I want to point out that about 25% of our budget our expenses is paid from commissions and costs that Gateway Wilkins and Pitt Karen contribute to our budget. So when you look at what is on here, um, as far as the department, 25% of that gets reimbursed on the you know, through the revenue side or through through our work, through what we do for those other communities. Or because those, we collect their we collect their taxes, right? So and and uh, con it, it's really a win-win situation because they probably couldn't pay another collector what they pay us and do the auditing and the services. Is it worth it on our side? Yes, yeah, it, it is. It keeps our costs down. It, it's it, yeah, it, it's saving on our costs because we have to do the job either way, and then on the other side, they're getting auditing services for free. I, I shouldn't say for free, but other other collection firms don't do auditing yeah. at all. So exactly. we're offering that in part with what we do, um, and that was that keeps our costs low. It generates revenue for them. So that's what I had to say about expenses, and then on the revenue side. Um, you know, we, we continue to uncover unpaid, underpaid tax revenues from primarily the business community. Um, the earned income tax, you know, is through Keystone. So we have the local services tax and the business and mercantile license and tax, and then the trade shows. We also uh, get rid How of revenue from that. How much is our tax that? office involved in the collection of back taxes what, uh, for, for the other communities? For other communities? We, we collect all of their business privilege, mercantile licenses, uh, you know, as well. Yeah, we charge them 10% of what okay. we find. Well, we, we, we yeah. get 
Yeah, I mean, we... we For the delinquent. It's, there's a formula involved. Yes. Let me just, let's just leave it at that. That's you know? okay, yeah. And you yeah. feel that's, a, that's, at this point, it's fair? It's very competitive. Fair I, I mean, are we, we are could... We, are we... We might be under... Giving too much away? Oh. Uh, Providing a, providing a service for a discounted rate? I, we, I was talking to Liz. We were discussing. Yeah, we were, discussed. Yeah, we're yeah. discussing. Yeah. And, we were. And, with, and we'll bring. Yeah. We were just discussing that today. And, uh, and uh, we're going to discuss the fees it more. we get from them for doing that service, well, it's it, probably still profitable. Correct? I was just going to oh, say, yeah. in our revenues, um, there's a PSD commissions page, revenue page 25, and it's. 1300 307 you can see those are strictly commissions on the revenue we process and that's how all the other agencies you know when you get your EIT reports they charge us a fee this is this is in along the same lines of what you would see if you were looking at another collection firm um, but in addition to that uh, there's line 17 which is costs recovered by the tax office which well, wait a minute. That's not it. Wait, cost of collections. I'm sorry. Line 25. We moved that mm -hmm. to its own it's line. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm no, sorry. Line 20. 25. There's right. another 18,000 no, as of okay. September. You know, there was 37,000. That that line should reflect, and I'm not sure it's it's all those years are accurate, but there's roughly around a $20,000 revenue there. And what happens is when we send out notices to a, a, a account, we give them a reminder. If we have to go to the next step, then we charge them a fee because now we have to investigate owners and, and there's all kinds of research goes on. And then when we go to the magistrate, there's all those fees. So when we get reimbursed, some of that is strictly revenue for our time. Oh. Um, so it's like a billable hour, but it's built in. And we have a fixed fee schedule that we send them so they know before they get charged how much it's going to be if they ignore our notices. So we're very upfront with it. And we make every effort to avoid going to the magistrate, avoid, uh, because that's, it's a hassle, truthfully. Yeah. But, but those revenues are revenues that we keep. So, so the fee schedule, would that be, is that something that fluctuates year to year, or is that the It's an ordinance same? that was established, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's used for grass cutting and other, it's not yeah, just yeah. the tax office that uses that fee schedule. So, okay, so it's a fee schedule. It's a right. fee schedule that's by ordinance. Okay. And we and send them a copy of it. You should always look at the fee schedules and see if it's really reasonable yeah. at this period of time. Right, right. Because that's kind of what I'm saying. No, yes, you're right. You right. No, you're correct. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, we, yeah. I haven't looked at it, and we yeah. should. Well, look I know at the court. The court fees and things are set by yeah. Allegheny County or the right. magistrate. Those are fixed, not right. by us, but we we charge but late charges and stuff like that. That's yeah. in our fee schedule. We mm -hmm. can. Right. Okay. We should adjust look at those. It. We should. Right. Do, we should and then we should make an ordinance and say what it is. Yeah. So, yeah. it's the auditing that makes us yeah. such that's a success. The, that is. The, um, that's you know, the key. we we find on average 300 accounts each year that are new that we didn't know about or have moved in out of the into the municipality. Um, you know, we again we do auditing, which nobody else does. We yeah. we used to audit EIT when we did EIT. That doesn't happen but now anymore. Has that, no, right? but nobody does it. It doesn't. Do it's it not either. required under Act 32. So. Yeah, they have ways of billing, but they don't actually audit. Um, I, I mentioned last year when I was up here that six, fifty to sixty thousand dollars of local services tax revenue that we audited was paid to another community, and we got it back to Monroeville. As you can see in your budget on page uh, twenty-five, look at that Keystone and what they have done for delinquent. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have done more on the real estate side delinquent than they have on EIT. Yeah. Eighty-six thousand dollars is not a reasonable number for delinquent yeah. as when our income tax. Our, our, um, our collections were, uh, a lot of it when we did it in-house, were quarterly self-pay, and now the employer withholds, which would make that number fluctuate a bit. But there are many, many, many people that are self-employed that have to pay on other income that, that needs pursued. And, um, and of course, businesses that may or may not be filing um, on behalf of their employees. So there's there's a bunch of money out there, I'm sure. Yeah. If you were aggressive. If you yeah. wanted to be aggressive. Do we do the same for the communities we collect for? We go after people? Yes, yes yeah. we do. We go to the magistrate on behalf of Wilkins and Pitcairn. That's correct. I think at this time I wanted to put in a, 
uh, the solicitor has helped us uh, since he's been on board a lot. Well, I'm sure it makes your service is worth it to them by doing that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've streamlined things, and, and again, um, the solicitor's fees that are incurred get passed on to yeah. the taxpayer. Yes. Once so we well, collect on that. Well, that's yeah. kind of where I was headed. Yeah. Yeah, so. It isn't right. like a freebie, and his uh, costs will go against if we collect the money. Sometimes yeah. One thing you mentioned some, about well, the when. EI. One thing Pat yeah. mentioned, I think council should know, and maybe they probably do know, is you mentioned about how the key uh, the EIT delinquent yes. and their Senate bill what's the number of the Senate bill for the uh, mercantile tax to collect that statewide you talk about local services tax that is was that is, the local ser no, I it, was it was local services tax they want to try and consolidate that and there's a lot of opposition because for the same reason that no, nobody's required to audit it's not in the bill right. and you're gonna lose and then the money goes where the employer tells the collector to send it and no one's looking to see if those codes are correct we look at that well, I thought there was a Senate bill also for the mercantile tax that that was um, <coughs> I thought that was defeated that it no well actually the yeah, yeah. it la the time lapse I don't know if I have the right yeah. language but basically yeah. the time lapsed on it on they reintroduced okay. a new bill All the right. new bill yeah. did not include the business privilege and mercantile because we lobbied so strongly yeah. they're so there's so apples and oranges from you know, it's nothing like a payroll. And, and, it, and it goes to it goes to the delinquent collection and what you guys have done on a tax off with respect to mercantile business tax proves a point, you know, about the auditing and the money you brought in on that. You know, and if you had the wage tax, you can go back through and see the wage tax on with delinquents. In wage tax, a delinquent <coughs> is difficult to collect. That's that's probably the one. It, I'm it's concerned. actually not as hard as it's right that's exactly true. because well, there's true. a it's a payroll yeah. it's a yeah. garnishment yeah. against your wages. <laughs> Once you know where someone's working, you just tack it, it on. The, the, it is a, it's know? easy to collect things in volume as any business wants right. to do. They want to do volume, and that's understandable. They want the low hanging yeah, fruit. Yeah, right, the low hanging everybody fruit. wants low hanging fruit right, exactly. and, and the easy. You know, when you so. have to get into taking people to the magistrate, the labor intensive stuff, that's when it gets more difficult. Correct. But there's money there. But so. The fees that you charge are they um, uh, consistent with the fees that a uh, normal accounting firm would charge? Right. Uh, yes. We we back. do not gouge, and we. Um, oh right, and, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I know. I wasn't implying that. I'm right, <laughs> but, but but I say that because I do see there's percentages added on to other other collection firms. They add a percentage of the unpaid balance, and sometimes the fees are more than the tax. The interest, the penalty, the charges add up to more than the tax. We try to avoid that. One of the problems we have is we have some difficult taxpayers that we've been pursuing for several years, and yes, once it starts accruing, it can become more than the tax. We try not to do that, but it's on them. You know, it's not like they didn't know. <laughs> their decision. It we, was their decision. Yes, but correct. we try not gouge businesses in Monroeville it's and we are a friendly group we try to do is what is fair for everyone and not going out to gouge just one in this you know one uh, business because it's not fair you want businesses to stay right, and you want to yeah. be fair with the way you collect your taxes right. to them so now, all you have to do is look at the income pie chart and see where the money comes from and it's not us it's We're just a little sliver. Businesses are paying the bill. They are. Yeah. This. This. Yeah. This is a, a that's, huge. That's why we want to be friendly. It would be huge friendly. to replace. I know Scranton has um, just put on their election ballot this week. They asked the public if they would, if the school district uh, could switch to a payroll tax. That doesn't mean they're going to do it. They still have to go through legislation. Um, that was a an idea that, um, of course, the city of Pittsburgh does have, but no one else can have it at this time. Um, but we, in 2008, I know we looked at that, um, you know, whether that was going to be worthy. It's just a shift, to be honest with you. It is a shift. So well, The reason the city has it is because they're under that uh, Act uh, 47. Well, they were under Act 42 and they were distressed, yeah. and then that was part of the package of them becoming more, uh, you know, solvent. So, um, but in all essence, it was a revenue neutral was what it had to be right. okay. so when they did that and Scranton will have to do the same thing they'll have to make it revenue neutral some people pay more some people pay less 
Correct. It, so but in our, losers but, both ways. But when you're looking at that aspect, you're looking at what do you want in the community? Do you want um, businesses that have a lot of employees? Because if you have a payroll tax, they're probably going to move out versus a business has fewer employees but higher revenue than the mercantile and business privilege works better. So you have to look at what your business base is and what kind of traffic you have, you know, uh, traffic flow for the employees and things. And, and just a note about the payroll tax, it does not uh, impact at all nonprofit organizations. So none of the hospitals, none of the, and that was one of the, the caveats when Pittsburgh adopted it, they didn't gain anything from the universities or the hospitals or anything, which is a huge piece for them. Perfect for them. Yeah. yeah, so looking at that, yeah. you always have to consider that that's not going to help you with the nonprofits. Um, so back to auditing, like I said, it makes us distinguished. Um, we, uh, some statistics I wanted to share with you was um, our budget revenue for, and I'm just talking about Act 511, which is Mercantile Business Privilege, the license. I'm not going to talk about, you know, like the real estate's under its own uh, law, but we had a 7% increase in our revenue. So as we made money over these years, our budget's gone up, but yet um, we still exceeded the budget by 1.5 million. By the end of this year, it'll be 1.5 million in excess revenue in addition to what the budget was set at um, with that increase. Um, so in the past five years, it's been a 5.7 million windfall that we've been able to give you. It's over a million each year, roughly. So. Very good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. Um, our tax office uh, cost is about two percent of the revenue we collect, and if you look at what your contracts are with other what other communities char are charged by the collection agencies, it's right in line with that or less. Um, some of the uh, firms will charge you for printing for postage. This two percent is including everything that you know our staff, our our uh, healthcare, everything. Um, so we're right in line with what you would get if you hired an outside uh, firm. The difference is outside firms don't have the auditing, so if you wanted to get someone to audit for you, it's roughly 20 to 25% of whatever they collect. And we're not charging, you know, that's, yeah. that's part of our budget. We don't have that as, as an overage. Um, and then the um, 2019 auditing re revenues, and this wasn't an easy number to come up with, but we uh, took the time to put together uh, how much of our revenue is strictly from going to the magistrate, settling court cases um, that have been outstanding. One was outstanding for five years. We just settled on this year. And then um, finding these underpaid and, and people that weren't reported at all. It was 18% um, of the revenue that you see in this budget. Without that, it would be 18% lower. And it's 4% of the entire municipal budget in auditing. Uh, so we've exceeded expectations. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with what we're doing. <laughs> so. One we're question, happy one question under your desk, yeah. Pat. Are you adding a person? No. No. Uh, that'll go with you. Josie, we mentioned that to Josie today. Yeah. That was a mistake. <laughs> oh. Temporary yeah. employees. The zero to 29,000? Yeah. 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 That, was, that was just a... Uh, scratch that? Yeah, scratch Yeah, that. it should be included with the number. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. I talked to her. Yeah. We talked to her already. So yeah. The total's correct. Yes. Yeah. Correct. The, yeah. Well, so the, the total is um, 277,791, which is slightly more than the 2,000... Yeah. 19 of 272 924 okay. it was just okay. a yeah when we do the budget data error in August we put it we put in numbers in all these columns and then whenever all the calculations are done the payroll and benefits get put corrected it. to actual so we yeah. we do put numbers in there but then they change between when we do them and when it gets okay. to this point so, so we don't put them yeah. In. yeah so we hope we're we're able to you know, continue the vision that council has with the revenue we're collecting. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue to do that. So, um, is there any other questions? Nope. Ever since, uh, one last statement, ever since new council have taken over from when we had the old council seven years ago, six years ago, that's when the income went down because of certain things that they were trying to manipulate or 
now <clears throat> with this new council and with your support to us, we have done a uh, banner. We've done great. And that's what I want to make sure that you all understand that we appreciate you. And I thank you for supporting us. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thanks. Sure. So, Council, that, uh, that ends uh, the department head presentations for this evening. There's going to be more uh, next Thursday, November 14th at 6.30 p.m. is our next budget hearing. Uh, is there any, uh, right now, Council, any discussion about the budget? At this point? Not right now. Not right now, sir. Yes, sir. Just, Very good. I just have one. Go ahead, Mr. Harvey. I'm sorry to hold everybody up. Tim, is there going to be, a, are you eventually ultimately going to present a, a capital budget? Yeah, we're working on that right now. We're working on the capital budget right now, and hopefully we'll get that to you within the next couple months. The only reason why I ask is, is uh, recently it's come to my attention both for what I do and and uh, up here on council, um, that I don't think we remembered to put in the, the capital budget that you might want to consider uh, the Opticom controlling system for the traffic signals is outdated, and for the emergency vehicles to get around town and change the lights, uh, they are telling me that they can't even get the parts uh, for our system out there right now. Uh, they're lucky to keep the, what we have functioning. And I think we should seriously look into a new system. A whole new Opticom system. Yeah, one of the, the mo not one of the, the most difficult part of putting a capital budget together is getting at least a kind of a ballpark <coughs> of what you're going to put in there. You have a five-year capital improvement program and you put something in here for 2023 you put that number in there, you've got to estimate for inflation and at least get a ballpark figure. Those are the things right now that, you know, are putting together, like, you know, Paul, you're talking about an op Opticon system, and, and I don't know if Pat would look into that or Mr. Ugas, you listening? <laughs> I'm writing <laughs> some notes. Right and, uh, but that's one of the things r right now is, is, is trying to get the, the prices together for, for everything. Yeah, I'm just saying that unless you respond to emergency calls, you probably have very little appreciation for the Opticom traffic system that's out there, nope. except for that you probably yell at it when an emergency vehicle is coming up and you were about to get the green and it turns it red. Yeah. And then, of course, it starts the cycle all over again after the emergency vehicle goes through. But the way here. <laughs> for those emergency vehicles to safely get through these, this town, I, I'm telling you there, that it is crucial to have an, uh, a functioning Opticom system because uh, I'll just use one example, uh, Christmas shopping season. Mm. And uh, I'm telling you to drive one of those fire trucks or an ambulance down Route 22 or even some of the other highways without being able to change the lights to get the traffic out from in front of you uh, is it's crucial. That's all I can say. Would that be a benefit because of for example, the accident we had on 22 also, to upgrade those Opticon. Well, I think the Opticon did what it was supposed to do there, but... Yeah, but still. But, yes, and uh, right now, uh, the Opticoms are... 20 plus I, I don't know old. if they're, I don't know if because of their age, but they're slow in responding, and some of them are slowed responding because of a busy, busy intersection like 22 and 48. It has a whole bunch of directions. It's got to get shut down before it can give the emergency vehicle the green light. And <clears throat> the newer stuff is, is faster. It sees you sooner. You know, it gives them time to get that intersection shut down and change the directions to the emergency vehicle. I'll give you an example, Tom. Coming down from number five fire hall towards the parkway bridges, that Opticom doesn't see us until we get under those bridges. And, and by then, we're at a standstill, you know. And I'm not saying you just want to keep moving to the emergency call. And then you turn right on 22 and it starts all over again, you know. And some of the newer Opticom systems would have those traffic lights turned to empty that traffic out a bit. Although some people don't even know what to do when the light turns green. But... Uh, 
either way, I, I think it's very crucial. It's, it's not just for the fire department, it's EMS and police, too. For everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. To, your, to your point, Mr. Harvey, I mean, that's definitely a, a capital budget uh, improvement that is uh, a separate budget than this. So Mr. Little, I'm sure, will be meeting with uh, Chief Cole, Mr. Hugus, uh, as far as the traffic signals, and uh, get a proper estimate on those <coughs> for the capital capital improvement budget. Other than that, down get an as estimate. possible. Okay, Council, so any other discussions of uh, the 2020 budget at this point? Oh, no, no, sir. Okay, I'm going to move over actually to public comment on the on the budget, just the uh, budget itself. You will have more. Are we going to do roll call and <laughs> pledge allegiance? We'll do that in a little bit. Okay. So is there anyone from the public that would like to comment on the 2020 budget only? Once again, there'll be multiple opportunities for you to do this over the next few months, but is there anyone like to comment at this point? We're going to close that portion of the meeting. And actually, what we're going to do is we're going to adjourn the public, uh, the public hearing. Is there a motion to adjourn the public hearing? Motion for the to budget? adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm seeing none. We're going to take a five-minute recess, and then what we're going to do is then start up our Citizens' Night meeting for, uh, for November. Hey, where you been?
I would like to call to order the municipality of Monroeville's Citizens Night and agenda setting meeting for November 7th, 2019. It is approximately 8 p.m. Would all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a presentation counseled by Brian Keeger, Progress City LLC, Autism Employment Network. Brian, you're here. I'm sorry, Brian. Kiger? Kiger, yes. Kiger, I mispronounced yes. that. That's sorry. quite all right. Happens all the time. Uh, well, thank you for having me, and uh, thank you to Councilwoman uh, Linda Gatiss for uh, making us aware of this and inviting us to come out. Uh, I know the mayor has been to our store over on Route 22 as well, and so... Uh, coming here today to introduce you to Spectra Dolce, which is our confection store on 22 in the former Park Street Treats uh, location. Uh, actually, stones throw away from here. Um, and Spectra Dolce is a product of our Autism Employment Network. So the store will be completely staffed uh, by adults on the autism spectrum as a training facility, a training opportunity, a workplace uh, engagement opportunity for adults who are struggling to find meaningful, sustainable employment uh, with an employer. It is a training tool that we actually hope will help uh, prepare people for sustainable jobs with uh, members of our Autism Employment Network. We have uh, municipalities who are part of our network. Uh, Cranberry Township signed up about two weeks ago. We've got manufacturers, we have IT firms, uh, and they join the network to learn more about autism and to uh, engage with us in a way to employ adults uh, in these sustainable careers. Uh, and so it's been a pleasure to launch our, on our store uh, on 22 here within the last month, uh, taking over par for Park Street Treats. Uh, and uh, the support from the community so far has been impressive. I know, like I said, Mayor, you've been in with your family, and um, Alinda was at the uh, grand opening ceremony on November 2nd. Uh, we hope that, that we can turn that, that corner of 22 there, where it almost meets uh, Monroeville Boulevard, into a light. Um, uh, of hope for these adults that are struggling to find employment. There isn't a day that goes by that we don't have somebody come in and ask us how they can work uh, in our store to the point that we're you know, somewhat overstaffed at this point uh, and trying to find additional uh, opportunities for them to get meaningful employment um, with uh, Spectra Dolce, with the uh, Autism Employment Network, and with Progress City, uh, our parent company. Uh, and so we're, we're glad to, to be residents of Monroeville and, and, and be able to offer this business opportunity as well here uh, in the municipality. Um, I think that's, if you've got right, any. So, yeah, it's absolutely wonderful what you're doing there at that facility. And we're, we're really proud to have you as part of our community. And uh, could you explain the waffles a little bit? Sure, yes. So, uh, yeah, so we do have authentic Belgian waffles. Uh, these are not the waffles that you might get at, say, a Denny's or anything like that. Uh, Belgian waffles, authentic Belgian waffles, are actually made with a pearl sugar, which is a beet sugar uh, that caramelizes under heat and it doesn't burn like cane sugar does. And it's actually a dough, not a batter. So it is actually a dough that is placed onto the waffle iron. And it is more like a pastry. You don't put syrup on it. We did have a customer who stormed out when we didn't have syrup. Uh, it is a pastry that you can eat with your hand. Uh, you can put ice cream on it, fresh fruit, uh, Nutella, or even cookie butter spread. Uh, these are the same waffles that the waffle carts in Times Square serve. Uh, and so it is, it is certainly something that is a, a staple. Uh, and in addition to the Perry's ice cream, uh, those of the people who are fans of Perry's ice cream come in and uh, they're happy to see that as well. We do all of the dipping of the Oreos and the peanut butter meltaways and the pretzels and all that stuff right there in the shop. Uh, and uh, we're teaching people how to learn this valuable skill set in culinary arts and, and even customer service and packaging and assembling uh, right there in the store. And so it's been uh, a whirlwind of a couple months to get this up and running, but uh, it's been exciting and rewarding at the same time. Excellent. And your hours? We are open right now Tuesday through Saturday. Uh, Tuesday through Thursday, we're open 11 to 8, and on the weekends, uh, Friday and Saturday, we are open 11 to 9. And we hope to expand to mornings and even Sundays and, and Mondays as well. Excellent. All right. Great.
Council, any other questions? No, just, yes, thank you. you know, we, we thank you for bringing the business into Monroe, as being Monroe residents as well, raising the awareness um, of autism, the understanding, and the tolerance, as we spoke about at the opening. Yes. Um, and I think that's a great thing as a reach out to the community. And if anybody would have any need for or would like to have some employees. Sure. Um, they could contact you directly. Yes, they can stop over, get some candy, and give some. Stop a in, talk. get some fudge, get some candy, and uh, ask for. Uh, Which Brian. is fantastic, by the yeah. way. I took yeah, some home you. for the hubby. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, we'd be happy to, to help anybody with this. Um, use some training on autism awareness, and then that engagement, that coaching, yes. to help them understand how they can make that. Uh, well, we appreciate it. Thank you. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you guys. Thank you to your wife as well. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming Thanks. out. Okay, we're going to open up for citizens' remarks and comments on any municipal item. If there's anyone that's signed in, and you also have an opportunity to sign in if you uh, have Anywhere not. Where am I? So, sir, if you could state your name for the record, please, and that you are a Monroeville resident. Yes, my name is Len Young, resident of Monroeville. And uh, with the weather being so balmy today, you know, 80 degrees and sunshine. Mm hmm. Oh, that's my, I was talking to my parents down in South Florida. That's right. I got a little mixed up. Um, let's talk about the swimming pool, Bell Air Pool. I understand that it's a done deal now that it's been sold. Is that right? Um, addressing council in general, what was the uh, feedback or the uh, tone of your constituents that contacted you about the swimming pool? Did they urge you to sell the pool? Anybody? I got no phone calls. Just Nothing? <clears throat> so the municipal, the, the residents of the municipality, they were in favor of selling the pool or not, generally speaking? Anybody? I would say what they had to say, they said, said here in the audience. I didn't get any phone calls in my house. Right, but people who did come up here. It was the members of the pool. Take to speak up. Then, yeah. That yeah, word you, right, you did. I apologize. Selling the pool. Yeah. Sorry. The reason I'm bringing I mean, it up is you did. Yeah, they wanted us, but there wasn't a lot of other input from other residents. It just seems such a shame. I mean, you know, you drive on that turnpike, they got a lot of room. I know they want to expand and everything. It's probably going to be like five or six years until they even get around to Len, moving dirt. Len, yeah. We had to sell it to them. Had to. Love imminent domain. Who put the gun to your head? I mean, it's like. Uh, yes. No, no. It's going to. Here's one more time. Yeah. They were going to take half of that property. That's all they wanted. That would have closed the pool. They were going to take it one mm -hmm. way or another. Either we sell it to them or they're going to take it. They decided to give us an offer of twice that much to take the whole piece of property because if, if we agreed to it, they were going to put a salt down there. If we said no, they were going to take what they wanted and, and move down the road. Yeah, and well. It, it, it's not a complicated issue because they were going to cut our pool property in half. And, and, and there wasn't a, a deal. There wasn't a, you know, a negotiating power on ours. We, something we couldn't say, oh, no, we disagree to that. Because well, they were going to file papers. Yeah, I'm no engineer. But I know when I drive on that turnpike, and there's lots of room on both sides that they could have shifted it over a little bit or something just to save our stinking pool. It's just, I'm just, I'm very disappointed that the pool was sold, but it's a done deal, I guess, and that's the way it goes. Uh, the good news is, Saturday nights, nobody's got anything else better to do than watch reruns on the TV. So what you need to do is go down to the American Legion, <laughs> bottom of Duff Road, Gold Star Post 820. Uh, we move the bingo up an hour, so instead of waiting until 8 o'clock, the bingo starts at 7 p.m. Saturday nights, Gold Star Post 820, bottom of Duff Road there on the William Penn Highway bring a few dollars and uh, have a great time and support a worthy cause too. That's all. Thanks. Thanks. Have Thank a good you. night. Is <coughs> there anyone else would like to address council? By the way, this young lady, I have talked to her on the phone. Many times. Mm -hmm. We became but, close personal yeah, friends. <laughs> In the month of end of June and beginning of July. We right. talked on the 4th of July <laughs> or the 3rd actually. Right. So, um, Candace Bruno, I am a resident. I just wanted to get an update on what's going on in the pool. We couldn't talk about anything. We couldn't make plans before the sale. The sale, unfortunately, went through. 
So I just want to know what's going on. Good. And just before, you know, and I, I apologize because I was going to have Mr. Poach mm -hmm. present this before the comment period. Okay. But uh, do you have anything else you want to comment about other than that, or you just want to um, get the update? I just want to get an update, and I also want to know, I know that we said that that rebuilding the pool was unmanageable. We couldn't do it. Is that still, I know that you said that we were tasked with a problem to open the pool 2020, or open um, options for swimming in mm -hmm. 2020. That's correct. So what about 2021, 2022, 2023, future? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for, too. Okay. That part has so. not been discussed further okay. at this point. Yeah, but is there anything else you want to? No, that was it. About? I just want to know where I'm going to. Sure. Just give your presentation. And I'm Len, sorry. Yeah, and I and I could have saved you some, probably some topics too as well too. So, uh, again, back to the original our, our original conversation, and Ms. Bruno and I have also communicated as well, on some stuff. Our task has been with our our committee uh, has been to replace the the focus has been for 2020 the aquatic services and I'm going to use that as a broad term because it doesn't just include those things that went on at the pool it's a, and a lot of things with the parks and recreation department as well if you were here for the other presentation they discussed some things they do and don't do but they're continuing their programs as well so that's taken into consideration um, just as a quick review we had um, a focus kind of a focus group meeting that's a point to start with in addition to the public comments that we had received from everyone here uh, on citizens nights for the last couple of months um, we tried to get an understanding of what our capabilities were and we used some of the community pools uh, as well uh, the, the clubs to talk to them about what was their capability and what's their viability too we didn't want to like jump into something and not have a thought on it we got a positive reinforcement we started to move ahead so on I have my agenda sitting here the 20 I wrote my notes down so 29th of October um, we met here uh, there we go with the members of the residents uh, our committee with uh, the other uh, pools that were in place in town in community and discussed okay folks what do we need to do and what can we specifically you know drill down into and make happen number one has been uh, pr provisions for the swim teams as well interestingly enough that group brought a lot of information forward to us regarding the league the capability the things that are in place the most impressive thing that happened I think that night was everybody was willing to roll their sleeves up and get to work with that in fact one of the um, uh, pools uh, I believe it's Haymaker uh, correct if I'm wrong was going to inquire to some parameters with the league what does this mean if the pool if the team exists in different places so we are getting that answer from them so those folks have jumped into that that process yes yes, yes. right because you have to L. be a member yeah yes, east, east, eastern suburbs well, yeah like to to do that so there were some parameters we weren't really aware of that they brought forward to that um, the next piece was we started to talk about co common program features as well to continue with swimming lessons things that are in place what people do what they cannot do who's willing to do that and to summarize that again the groups have said okay we're gonna meet that group group again uh, and that group included uh, Haymaker Swim Club Gateway Heights Garden City Park Swim Club JCC and then of course our our committee and and mr. little as well and uh, mr. Estock from Parks and Recreation so it's a larger group that's starting to work on this our goal has been now let's come up with some type of implementation plan that we can then present to the public okay that's that's the next piece of this to do that um, my intention to do that is to have that that together be able to have that that plan posted say so here's a rough idea of the things that we can do to do that and then entertain a meeting with public comment okay advertised appropriately here you know minutes taken information that's ongoing for where we're moving forward with that piece is it going to be everything exactly the same of course not it's not the same physical location you know to do that some things may be better um, I'm waiting to hear some outcome for uh, the the league and the swim team piece I, I don't I'm not really I don't really have a sense of that yet but the, those groups are working together to, to do that and they were reaching out to the swim coach I almost forgot to do this from uh, we had the conversation mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. um, swim coach and that leadership of the team from Bel Air Okay. so they have they've reached to do that so they're they were speaking the same language okay so that particular team as it exists to do that uh, intent intent is great okay we know we're gonna solve this problem right away um, I think it'd be successful if we start to look forward into the longer term what that what's that going to be I don't have an answer for that just yet but that is the intent of it because we don't want to this is not just to put a band-aid on it for 2020 it's to make sure that the programs exist and that's been the problem I think I've said that before if not I'll, I'll repeat it now is our intentions to assure 
those programs continue to exist, you know, into the future. You know, to that, and that was some of the reasons we had a budgetary discussion on how, you know, the the funds are in there to continue to support programs that were at the pool. How does that look now? Because you can't have a budget item for something that doesn't exist. Right. Doesn't mean it's going away, but he understands that. I think that's a successful way to explain that. Tim, is that a, a accurate assessment? It's not going away. You know, we still will be able to do that, which included in that budget item things like the camps and programs and swim lessons and things that occurred at that facility okay. to do that. So. Um, we understand, you know, it's it's May. Things open up. You know, we want to try to move forward as we can. Um, uh, Mr. Little's office has been helping us with the calendar. To look forward to that public meeting. There's, it's very busy for a while. I uh, hope to have that soon. The end of January, February time frame. I hate to say that now and not be able to deliver on that time. But we're we're working with that group to the, the group that we just mentioned to get some more details, put okay. some more you know meat on what we're talking about that's in place. Okay. Okay. So we continue to move that. Don't want to ignore it. Don't want to go away from it. We're not going to let it let it go. We want to get that the programs moving forward, and I hope we'll get better as the years go on with it. We need to do that as well. Okay. Okay, with it. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, and thanks for keeping in touch with us. I appreciate no, it. I, I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll keep. Yes, ma'am. You know how to get in touch. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Poach. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep the floor open for citizens' <clears throat> comments. You have not signed in yet. Please I, do. I did. State your name for the record, please. Justin Kelnicki, Woodhaven Drive. Justin. Um, this is now the fourth council meeting since the lovely events of July 21st, which has left us homeless. And you know what I was coming for. I was going to read it. <laughs> awesome. So we're seeing if the meeting's ever going to happen and when that's scheduled for. Want so. me to read it now? Yes. Sure. Yes. Yes. Sure, Justin. Dear Logan's Ferry Road residents and area residents, the municipality of Monroeville and Ward 3 Council Monroe and Harvey would like to inform you that an informational meeting will be conducted on Wednesday, December 11th at 7 p.m. in the council chambers in Monroeville Municipal Building 2700 Monroeville Boulevard regarding stormwater issues on Logan's Ferry Road and the area. And I would add to that that um, if you didn't get a letter and you live in that area, you are still welcome. We, we tried to send it, send it to direct residents that were generally affected by those situations. <clears throat> so not every road and every resident off Logan's Ferry Road, especially ones to the right, <clears throat> may not have got a letter. Everybody to the left and on Logan's Ferry Road, it just went out. Cut, cut me a little break here. <laughs> it, it just went out today. Okay. So um, anyway, so the letter's out. The meeting said. We had to have the, the proper officials here that could give you the proper answers as much as much as they could. So there are going to be about seven officials here, myself, Mr. Little, Mr. Ratcher, Mr. Hugus, Mr. Story, engineering firm from the flood mitigation uh, firm. And am I missing anybody, Paul? I don't believe so. There. Are, all those people will be here. So. Repeat the day and time again for them. Yeah. Repeat the day and time again. December 11th at 7 p.m. Here. Thank you. I was going to come under my council report, but that's okay. Uh, Very good. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Does anyone else like to address council on any municipal item? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to close that. <laughs> Part of the meeting, and we're going to move over to our agenda setting meeting. Uh, all of council is here, other than uh, Mr. Duncan, who is ill this evening, and Mr. Arasinko, who is a, at a county meeting representing the municipality. Council, uh, I have an executive session announcement that council conducted an executive session for personnel and litigation reasons prior to the budget hearing and Citizens Night Thursday, November 7th, 2019, beginning at 6 p.m. until approximately 6.30 p.m. Council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the November 12th, 2019 council meeting. Uh, we're not having a present. That presentation's on Tuesday, right? Uh, apparently he must be. Okay. And we will have a presentation from Nova Insurance on Tuesday. Council, in front of you to review is, are your minutes. Of the Citizens Night meeting of October 3rd, 2019, the Council Work Session of October 3rd, 2019, 
and the regular council meeting of October 8th, 2019. Any comments, additions, or questions about the minutes, council? No, sir. No, sir. None. No, thank you. Council moving over to our reports of our tax collections. Any questions or comments this evening? No, sir. None, Mayor. Very good. None. Council, list of bills and budget transfers. Mrs. Gatus, we'll start with you. Do you have any questions this evening? No, sir. Thank you. Mr. Poach? No, sir. Mr. Harvey? Nothing. Nothing, sir. Mr. Johns? Yes. No, thank you. Mr. Wilson, very good. And payroll report, Council, any comments or questions? Seeing no. that we'll move over. Very good. We will uh, go over our vacancies on our boards, commissions, and authorities. There will be, you know, as the new year always, uh, as we approach the new year, there's always a lot, many more vacancies that are available. So any residents that are interested in getting involved on a local level with the municipality, please check out the vacancies and uh, get your name in for consideration. Council, bids and proposals. We have one this evening, the municipal building roof overlay bid. Mr. Little, please. Oh, boy. Yeah, um, Sorry, Jeff. We had a uh, bid opening uh, yesterday for the uh, municipal building roof overlay project. Uh, and council has a spreadsheet in their packet on uh, the prices that have come in on, on the bids. Um, we had uh, four bidders who bid in a range from uh, 232000 up to 385000 uh, the bids are probably a little higher, or probably higher than what council probably I expected. And just to explain a little bit of that, first of all, uh, we had a, uh, a pre-bid meeting last Monday, not this past, but the Monday before last. And we had uh, six bidders up on the roof looking. And we have 14 HVAC units up there. And... And not only that, but we have the parapet wall that is up there, and the roof rolls up, and it goes up onto the cap. And there's a little drawing uh, that's in the, in the back that uh, Steve Altair, the architect for MS Consultants, he put a little sketch together on that and maybe a little bit of a drainage system that has to be added up there, made the project a little bit more expensive than what it is or than what we thought according to how many square foot uh, the project may be. So the project itself is a little bit more complicated than, than what was uh, anticipated. Um, the, the successful, if council awards the bid, the successful bidder will have until May 1st of next spring uh, to complete the project. Steve Altair, the architect, and I uh, talked about this extensively. About Initially, we had it at the end of this year, but as we know, the weather literally is going south. And But one of the stipulations that's in the bid specs is that if they do begin work and they quit, they have to secure the roof so we do not have any damage inside. There's any uh, leaks. We do have leaks on occasion. Hence the reason why we're getting the roof repaired. Um, so they have until May 1st, a, a successful bidder has until May 1st to complete uh, the project. Uh, council has the spreadsheet, and you'll notice that uh, tennis. Where is that at, Mr. Where is Little? That? I, we can, I can, it's in your uh, packet. In this one? No, it's in your. Uh, in this one. Oh, here ah, we go. I've uh, looked through the entire thing yeah. three yeah, times. Sorry. Look at that again. Thank you. Got it. <laughs> okay, one of the uh, the low bidder tennis roofing and asphalt. Um, that makes it easier. They're the low bidder. However, uh, Steve Al uh, Altair, the uh, the architect, he put out th uh, three addenda, uh, and two of those addenda were important. In the uh, contractor tennis roofing and asphalt only picked up one addenda. They had to stipulate this in the. Uh, a bid contract that they picked up all three addenda from a uh, company called Prince, Princecape, which MS Consultants uses. Everything's done electronically nowadays. But they were and, definitely notified? Uh, they, were, they were not here for the pre-bid meeting. It wasn't mandatory, though. But the advertisement was in the paper that you had to pick up everything at Princecape. And obviously, they had to contact Princecape, I would imagine, in order to receive the bid documents. Now, why they did not receive uh, addenda two and three, we don't know. But that, as far as um, I am concerned, and my recommendation to council, disqualifies them 
from the bid. Great. And my recommendation uh, to council would be G&W Roofing at $240,000, which is approximately uh, a little under $8,000 more than the low bid. Uh, and believing that they did not have those two addenda is probably reason why they were the low bid. Um, and I've informed uh, Mr. Ratcher about this uh, this afternoon, so uh, he is aware of it. Any other questions uh, from council? My recommendation to council would be, even though this is higher, it's a roof. We have to get it fixed. If we're going to do anything else internally in the municipal building, it's like a house. The roof has to be fixed before you do anything else. I'm good. Mm -hmm. So it's great. Mr. Hugis, any uh, comments or concerns from your department about this? I was not part of this activity. Mr. Okay. Little took it over. Okay. I gave I gave Paul a little breathing room a couple of months ago. Black. So uh, <laughs> I know he was. I know he was. Bleeding room. Okay, he had enough on he had enough on his plate. So it <laughs> answers that. So he was happy. Yeah. He got Council, any other questions yeah. about this? No. no. Very good. We'll move over to our consent agenda. We have new business. We have uh, when do they start? One item. A little. When are they going to? Well, they they, they can, approve it first. We have, if you approve uh, the success, the uh, low bidder who who I believe should be the low bidder, as I mentioned, G&W Roofing, they can, as, as soon as they get all their documents into us with respect to their insurance and all of that, then they can, they can begin. And my suspicion, I don't know, they may not break, begin until the spring. All right, because a lot, when we had the pre-bid meeting, a lot of the uh, contractors were under the assumption that they could start in the spring. And we said, no, you can start right away. And and we kind of, one of the addendum we changed is that we made the completion date May 1st. So, we'll thank on you. That Tuesday night? Correct. Thank you. Yes. Okay, Council, our new business, we have uh, one item of new business 19 uh, 5 uh, SUB, Victor Peluso. Mr. Little, please. Yeah, applicant is requesting a preliminary and final subdivision approval of tax parcel 640N306 and 640N304. The applicant proposes to subdivide the two lots so that lot 1A has a total of 7,501.52 square feet and lot 1B has a total of 15,829.33 square feet. Properties are located at 294 Alba Way and 2217 Mount Pleasant Road in the R2 One Family Residential Zoning District. Planning Commission has approved this application. Mr. Wielden, anything to add? No, uh, it's a very simple subdivision. It's more of a lot line revision. There, there's two existing lots. They're just changing the shape of the two lots. Uh, MS Consultants has reviewed it. There were some minor uh, comments. They've all been addressed. Council, any questions? No. no. Very good. Moving over to our motions this evening. We have uh, three motions. Mr. Little. Okay, the first one is a motion to approve the settlement release of the Verizon wireless complaint. Council entered into this uh, several years ago, and uh, one of the items we talked about in executive session, and Council <coughs> will vote on this uh, this coming Tuesday. Okay, any other questions from Council on this, sir? You want to give a summary of that? I think we have to. Oh, um, yeah. Basically, uh, what the Verizon wireless complaint is, approximately back in, two th I believe it was in 2014, um, we had uh, noticed that uh, Verizon across the country, uh, this isn't just locally or in Pennsylvania, across the country, uh, we were not received, when I say we, the municipality gets 5% of the gross revenue of the franchise agreement with Verizon and Comcast. And it was noticed uh, by uh, an attorney in Mr. Cohen's, uh, who is our cable franchise attorney, that on the late fees that were paid, a 5% fee paid to the municipalities was not being collected, was not being distributed to the municipalities. So this became a class action lawsuit across the country, and there were, f there were f I think, five municipalities in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that entered into it, and one of them was, uh, was Monrova. We decided to enter into it, and the municipality, and it is taking six years for this to come to fruition. There was no legal cost or anything. Uh, everything was paid by Verizon. 
uh, but the municipality has gained a modicum amount of money of twenty thousand uh, dollars due to this class action lawsuit so council will vote uh, for the release and agreement on this on Tuesday evening Very good. next motion okay next one is the approval of the Vesley settlement you, if, if I may, I'd, without going into details because I have not briefed council yet because we ran out of time back there. And so I will brief you on uh, Tuesday and put this matter up for consideration. Just very generally what it is is a landowner um, has a, a dispute with the municipality regarding the widening of a road and if his property was taken in the widening of the road. This is an attempt to uh, resolve that dispute. So. I will uh, brief council on it in executive session and then provided that uh, um, you're of a mind to move ahead, then we can disclose it once it's approved. Very good. Yeah, we can fully discuss it at that point. Excellent. Mr. Little, next motion. Okay, the, uh, the next one is a motion to authorize to advertise an ordinance authorizing the proper officials of Monroeville to enter into a collective bargaining agreement of the years 2019 to 2022 with the Police Department Wage Policy Committee of the Municipality of Monroeville. Uh, there is a, uh, a, a tentative agreement between the staff and the Wage and Policy Committee, although the Wage and Policy Committee has, has not met, has not ratified on this uh, yet, um, but we're just, we're just uh, getting ahead of the curve here, and if council will approve the advertisement, we'll advertisement, so if the... Uh, if the uh, police rank and file vote in the affirmative on it, then council will be able to vote at the December 12th meeting to ratify it in the uh, collective bargaining agreement, which is a four-year agreement, will move forth. Okay. Very good. Council, any questions? We're going to move over to our reports of municipal staff. Mr. Ratcher, anything this evening? Nothing tonight. Mr. Little. Okay, the first item under my report is Northern Pike Repair Project. PennDOT has inf informed the municipality uh, that Northern Pike, just west of Abricks Creek Road, about 800 feet, will be repaired. The slope on the northern side of Northern Pike is failing, and that has to be buttressed up, so obviously the road doesn't slide, in, you know, slide into the ravine, into the creek there. Uh, so that is going to start January of 2020 with an anticipated completion date of uh, May 2020. Traffic will still be open. It will be reduced to one lane, and it, it, the, the traffic will be controlled through a, um, an automated uh, <clears throat> traffic light. And also when they're working there, they'll have workers there that are, have a sign-up, stop and go, so the traffic will be able to go through. If you go through that intersection every day or twice a day like I do, I would suggest probably taking an alternate route because I would imagine that traffic is going to be backed up coming back on to 22. They're going to have to control from 22. If you make a left, if you're heading west on 22, making a left on the northern pike, then they're going to have to control that right there, and there's only going to be so many cars that are going to be allowed in there, I would imagine. Uh, so that's going to be starting in uh, January. Can I ask a quick question, Mr. Hughes, about that? Yes, sir. When they're doing that, obviously I'm very well aware of that hillside. Yes, sir. When they're doing that, when you're going down the hill, I mean, they might already be doing it, but I'm going to ask anyway. When you're going down the hill to the red light, right before you get to the red light on the right-hand side there, that ravine where everybody cuts over to make so people can go the other direction, right. that, if somebody falls off that, you're going to have to get a tow truck to get them out of there. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that somebody's paying attention enough that they're fixing the other side. Maybe they'll consider fixing that part on the bottom right there. That's just not a, just a thought. Yeah, I know. I, we, you are correct because I I travel that at least once a day. I know. And it somebody that's not familiar with that they're going to fall they off. Could, yeah, they could. They could do that. You're right. Just there. a thought. Yeah, looking at the scope of the project, that is not included. Yeah, that's not part of the project. Well, I just thought maybe we could like mention it to somebody so that they're over there playing yeah, around. Yeah. I'll be quiet. <laughs> That's a good suggestion, Mr. Johnson. Thank you very much. Always. Mr. Little. Okay, uh, item number two, the 2020 terrain event. As we were talking about before, the terrain event was very successful. We had here approximately a month ago, and we have a schedule for another one next October, October 10th and 11th. Um, uh, same time, same channel, I guess. I mean, I don't know if the details have been worked out at what time it starts, but 
we're tentatively starting for next year for October 10th and 11th uh, for a terrain event. Yeah, it was an excellent event, and, uh, you know, tip of the hat to everybody involved. I mean, the, from the rec department to the public works department, the community park uh, employees over there, the Forbes Hospital was involved, the fire departments were involved, the EMS were involved, public safety, a lot of hands on deck. And this company was very impressed with how our community rallied around this event and put it on. So it was very successful. Like we mentioned earlier, what, we had about 7,000. Mr. Johns, how many? 7,835. 7, yeah, close to 8,000 people throughout the park in Monroeville. And also every hotel room was booked that weekend. Uh, restaurants were full. A lot of uh, positive... Uh, it really shined a positive light on Monroeville, everyone that came in. So uh, excellent event. So looking forward to next year's. Yeah. Mr. Little. Okay, number three is Monroeville's annual tree lighting festivities will be Tuesday, November 26th at 7 p.m. at the Old Stone Church. Always a uh, great event, especially for the kids uh, singing the 12 Days of Christmas. That's always a very nice event. And uh, so that'll be uh, the Tuesday, the 26th at 7 p.m. And it's the 50th anniversary. And it's the Is 50th it really? anniversary, okay. that's right. Jeez. Oh, wow. My anniversary. And one last comment from me as uh, my condolences go out to uh, the Lou Smith family. Um, Smitty was a, uh, a character, and uh, he will be uh, very much missed um, in the golf outing he took care of. And uh, I wasn't a manager here when he was a lieutenant and a detective, but... My understanding is he was a great one. So uh, my condolences to his family. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Little. Mr. Hugus, anything this evening? No, sir. Ms. Rock. I have nothing. Mr. Wilson. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, my condolences to the family of uh, Lou Smith, Smitty. Uh, I only knew Smitty for the last 10 years, but uh, you're right, Tim. He was a character, but... What a character he was. And uh, I enjoyed playing golf with him. I enjoyed being uh, with him. And uh, he had his own opinions, and uh, whether you liked it or not. Yeah. There you go. And uh, uh, that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Mr. Johns. Yes, sir. About Lou Smith, better known as Smitty. If you lived in the area, everybody knew who he was and in surrounding areas. You know, Smitty and I were friends longer than I can remember. And more often than not, we were like oil and water. And I do mean that when I say that. But towards the end, he died a week ago today. Towards the end, he showed up in my driveway. We made our peace and said goodbye. So to Terry and your family, I wish you the best. That being said, a couple of things going on at the convention center. On the 10th, Greensburg Great Train and Toy Show. I apologize, on the 9th and the 10th. On the 13th and the 14th is the Three Rivers Wet Weather Soar Conference. I'm not sure what that is, but I don't know if I can repeat that again or not. So. On the 22nd and 23rd, is the annual Pittsburgh Arts and Crafts Holiday Spectacular. On the 30th of the month and the 1st of December is the Showmaster's Gun Show. Mm. And with that, I am done. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Mr. Harvey. Great, great glasses. Yes, um, <laughs> I'm going to read the letter I read earlier one more time in case anybody is watching and didn't hear it. Uh, and this is to the Logan's Ferry Road area residents, the municipality of Monroeville, and Ward 3 Councilman Ron Harvey, myself, would like to inform you that the informational meeting will be conducted on the Wednesday, December 11th at 7 p.m. in the council chambers in the Monroeville Municipal Building at 2700 Monroeville Boulevard regarding stormwater issues in the Logan's Ferry Road area. I would ask that if you don't live in that area, you to maybe stay in the lobby until we see how full we get. I don't know what the turnout's going to be like. We could get 10 people. We could get 100 people. So uh, I would ask that uh, room be left for the Logan's Ferry Road residents. And only one other thing, and again, it, it was with every, what everybody else reported on. My sincere condolences to the Smith family. Smitty was... <coughs> 
a well-known person. He was a lieutenant that I served under in the Minerva Police Department. I could go on forever telling you stories about him, but I'll just say that he was the most truthful, honest, consistently hardworking officer on the department, in my opinion. He taught me a lot, and he was a friend, and I will miss him. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Mr. Poach. No, I just want to echo those thoughts, too. I, I mean, I, I had the chance to know Lou for, you know, all of my time in Monroeville and certainly really got to know him after he retired uh, in his, his community activism. How's that for a good, good term? <laughs> yeah, to do that. Um, and I was, I was glad I had the opportunity to, to visit with him uh, before he passed away and his family uh, up at East. Um, there was a number of people that spoke to me uh, on Tuesday at the polls uh, you know, talked about it and, and how they felt actually came up and, and talked to me and knew that we had also been friends to do that as well, too. So he's certainly going to be sorely missed uh, by a lot of us. Um, and uh, and I pass on, you know, Doug Cole's uh, <sighs> condolences as well. Uh, he spoke about him a great deal and, and uh, during his passing, too. So other than that, looking forward, and I, I appreciate everybody's efforts this past couple of weeks on our work with the uh, the poll program and we'll keep moving that forward I promise to do that and uh, to everyone here also our help and the municipal staff that's helping keeping this moving forward so thank yeah, you. unfortunately mayor I think chief Cole was one of his best friends and I think he uh, that was the day he left on vacation was the day he passed away and I uh, think chief Cole spent his whole vacation thinking about that he did he he, he texted me thinking about it said I was he was having a drink and thought it thought of Lou the other day like you're on vacation doc Mrs. Gatos. Well, I also condolences to uh, Smitty's family. Um, I got to know him when I was running for election the first time. He was very instrumental in helping get this community back on its in the right path, um, That's getting That's uh, Doug Cole back in his seat and um, getting us all up here so that we could get this borough back to where it, what it belonged and uh, become the great community that we are. So, you know, I thank him for, for that and being able to be part of that. Um, I also want to thank the people from Spectro Dolce for coming up. Uh, what they're doing is an amazing thing, and I think that we all feel that way. And it's nice to have some good news happening in this town. And those kinds of things need to be shared more often. And lastly, um, we were at, invited to an event that was very touching. Um, it was um, at Temple David. Um, on Saturday, October the 26th, and it was from darkness to light, from embrace to hope. And um, the service was phenomenal. And we also got to take pieces of glass for a mosaic that, that will be kept there uh, for eternity to, to remember the victims of the um, Tree of Life um, tragic shooting. Um, but the service was amazing. And I thank everyone that was there that they welcomed us with open arms and um, it was it was very touching. So um, I just want to say thank you to Rabbi Simon for reaching out to us <coughs> and then everyone that was a member that was there and how they treated us. And with that, I'm done. Thank you. And, uh, and I'm going to reiterate the condolences uh, that my colleagues up here uh, mentioned about Lou Smith. Uh, yes, yeah, Smitty was certainly, uh, Mr. Poche, a community activist. That's a good That's way right. of saying it. But he, he really certainly he cared about this community. He did. Many years of, of service to the community and the police department, longtime resident. Um, he, was, uh, he was honest, persistent, uh, tenacious. You know, mm -hmm. there's some words to describe him. And, and he, will be, he will be sorely, sorely missed. So with that, I would like to seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you and good night. <clears throat>